Welcome back to the Sim Hanger. My name's Mark. Thank you very much for watching and let's get started. In September of this year, the IDC or International Development Corporation issued a report on the augmented reality virtual reality headset market, reviewing the sales performance for 2023 through to June. The IDC reported that overall sales declined for the fourth quarter in a row, with volumes falling over 44% year on year for that quarter. The continued decline in unit terms is probably of no great surprise given the current economic downturn and the relatively small number of players in the AR VR market and changes to any one of the big players could have a big and dramatic effect on the market overall. And this to my mind is exactly what happened with a price hike and a considerable price hike in the best-selling VR headset in the market during the last 12-month outlook period, the MetaQuest 2. This factor dampened an already weak market, plus during the same period a number of new products announced, so a certain amount of customers will have been willing to wait and keep their hands in their pockets. The IDC report goes further to say that sales volumes for 2023 are going to be just slightly higher than those recorded in 2017. Although it needs to be acknowledged that the product mix was substantially different. This isn't the only bad news that VR enthusiasts have had this year, and speculation remains rampant regarding the possibility of HP withdrawing from the VR consumer market. I would stress that this is just speculation at this time as no formal announcement has been made. HP are obviously aware of such speculation regarding their HP Reverb G2, a popular VR headset particularly with flight and racing simmers, but as far as I'm aware have made no attempt to acknowledge or deny such speculation. And more recently, Reuters have reported that Pico VR, the VR company acquired about two years ago by ByteDance, ByteDance being the owners of TikTok, have plans to cut jobs and restructure the company, reportedly leaving the hardware side more or less intact, but rolling the software side back into the ByteDance development teams. At this juncture, it would be easy to arrive at the conclusion that the VR market was in a serious decline. But that conclusion would be wrong. The IDC report in itself is only reporting on sales figures for two quarters in effect, and there's certainly been a lull in demand, for many reasons, some of which I've already outlined. But there remains a firm and growing base of VR users across multiple platforms. And when we take a little closer look at the numbers in a rapidly changing landscape in AR and VR technology, as well as the IDC forecasts, it paints a very different picture. Turning back to Pico for a moment, they've enjoyed some considerable success in the Chinese, Asian and European markets. But for various reasons, the product's not for sale in one of the biggest VR markets in the world, the United States. And the chances are that outlook is unlikely to change in the short to medium term. Therefore, should be no surprise that there's been a downsizing or structural change to Pico so that it continue to operate profitably in its reachable markets. Additionally, as we look to the remainder of 2023 and in particular 2024, we have a number of new entrants into the market, not least of which is Apple with their Apple Vision Pro. And of course, we've got Sony with their PSVR 2, which is making considerable waves in the VR market. Meta recently reduced the price again of the Quest 2, but that did little to lift sales. However, the successor, the Quest 3, has recently launched, following hard on the heels of the Quest Pro, and we can get more analysis by having a look at this section of the IDC report, which shows the main suppliers in the 12-month period to June 2023 by quarter. Meta remained the major player at over 50% of total market share, but what is surprising is the impact Sony has had on the market in 2023, coming from 0 to 27% with their PSVR 2. Also from a Reuters report, the PSVR 2 sales figures from late February through to early April 23 was just a tad under 600,000 units, which Sony reported as on track. The IDC report goes on to predict a rebound in the VR market in unit terms for 2024, 
and beyond. The downturn in the standalone head-mounted displays, obviously heavily impacted by the decline in the Quest 2 sales, as well as dampened demand due to the weaker market. Conversely, the tethered head-mounted display is showing enormous growth, but bear in mind that this is distorted because Sony's PSVR 2 falls in this category. If we were to remove Sony from this, while well, it would paint a slightly different picture and also reflect a slowdown in demand. The forecast for 2024 and beyond is somewhat optimistic and reflects a real growth, with total unit sales predicted by 2027 at 30 million units. This will be boosted, obviously, by the likes of Apple entering the market and driven by some enviable customer loyalty there. Interestingly, the report also reflects stronger growth in the tethered VR market than in the standalone. I think with the advances in technology, etc., I'm not sure I agree with that. Personally, I believe we'll experience greater processing power, Wi-Fi 6 and beyond, AI-enabled technologies, cloud-based gaming, and the such like will mean that tethered PC VR may well become a thing of the past, with wireless PC VR already being a thing and able to provide an acceptable performance level. The IDC report itself is predicting a growth of something around 46-47%, which is enormous in itself even if coming off a low base for 2024. My personal view for the short-term outlook for 2024 would be that Meta, Pico and potentially Apple will dominate the market. And at this point, in terms of the console market itself, it looks like Sony is set to have no opposition. It's long been said that VR is still waiting for that killer app that will propel it to the forefront. And I suspect that after something close to a decade, we may be getting close. And whatever that may be, I think it's going to be a joining of augmented reality and virtual reality, which brings not just your virtual world, but your whole world into your headset. Taking a look at the figures and the market overall, I think what we're experiencing is more a lull in the market due to various circumstances, but there's strong reason to remain optimistic for future growth in the VR market. And I retain the view that VR will continue to gain adoption, its biggest challenges of course being its form factor at the moment, and the need for expensive hardware to drive it. But who knows what the future may hold. I'm excited by the development of VR for 2023, 2024 and beyond. What are your thoughts and feelings? Let me know in the comments below. I'd really appreciate your feedback. As always, it's been a pleasure having you on board. Thank you very much for joining me. Stay well, look after yourselves. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Helps the channel. Take care, look after yourselves. See you soon. And ciao for now.